Let's start with a confession. I once tried to extract DNA from a strawberry using this soap and rubbing alcohol. It worked, sort of. Uh, the result though looked less like the double helix of life and more like a booger suspended in cheap vodka. But that's the beauty of biohacking. It turns kitchen counters into labs and curiosity into catalysts for revolution. Meanwhile, in Silicon Valley, engineers are staring at computer chips and muttering, what if we made these more like brains? Today, at Knowing is Winning, we are diving into two worlds where science fiction becomes reality. Biohacking's DIY revolution and neuromorphic computing's quest to outthink us all with equal parts humor and existential dread. So gone are the days when genetic engineering required a PhD and a million dollar lab. Thanks to kits like the Odin's DIY CRISPR bacterial genome editing kit, you can now rewire E. coli DNA while waiting for your microwave popcorn to explode. For only 199 bucks, you get everything. Case 9 enzymes, guide RNA, and enough agar plates to turn your dining table into a microbial art project. The kit even includes an example experiment where you mutate a bacterial gene to survive on antibiotic-laced media. A party trick that's equal parts cool and mildly terrifying. As one reviewer put it, I have never felt more like a med scientist and my cat is judging me right now. But this isn't just about hobbyists playing God with bacteria. The open source movement is democratizing medical devices too. Researchers have designed low-cost ventilators and CPAP machines using Arduino microcontrollers and 3D printed parts. These devices cost under 100 bucks compared to commercial models that run into thousands and can be built by engineering students with basic workshop tools. Imagine a future where hospitals in low-income countries print life-saving gear like it's IKEA furniture. Assembly required, but no um, Allen wrench included. Of course, not all biohacking stories end well. Um, take uh, Josiah Zayner, the self-proclaimed CEO of genetic engineering, who once injected himself with CRISPR live on stage to cure his um, lactose intolerance. Spoiler, it didn't work. But it did spark a debate about whether biohackers are pioneers or just people who miss the memo on ethics. Zayner antics, along with others like uh, Tristan Roberts, who live streamed his DIY HIV gene therapy, raise a critical question. When does citizen science become citizen recklessness? The Royal Society of Biology describes biohacking as uh, unconventional biotechnology conducted outside traditional labs. Translation, it's science with a punk rock ethos. Community labs like BioCurious in California or London's Hackspace offer shared equipment and workshops, turning amateurs into innovators. But as one critic noted, um, the difference between a breakthrough and a biohazard is often just a misplaced decimal point. Yet, it's spreading like a wildfire. A re retired nurse in Texas has implanted a rice-sized sensor under her skin that tracks her cortisol levels, syncing data to her smartwatch via an app she coded herself. Meanwhile, in a Tokyo makerspace, a group of artists is brewing living paint from engineered microbes that shift colors based on air pollution. Welcome to the bleeding edge of biohacking in 2025, where biology isn't just studied, but remixed, hacked, and turned into open source earth.
Anyway, while CRISPR kits still make headlines, this year's biohacking scene is exploding in directions that would make even Silicon Valley's transhumanists blush. Let's start with the uh, pocket-sized DNA labs. Forget those clunky PCR machines of uh, your 2025's DI biologists are wielding portable sequencers smaller than a stapler. Devices like Oxford Nanopore's Voltrax V3 now plug into smartphones, letting users analyze DNA at uh, picnics or punk shows. A collective in Sao Paulo, Brazil, recently used one to identify counterfeit acai supplements sold in street markets while anarchist gardeners in Portland mapped soil microbiome diversity in community plots. As one hacker quipped, it's like 23 and me, but uh, for your compost bin. But what is the real game changer? Open PCR 2.0, an 800 bucks open source thermocycler that's become the Swiss army knife of garage labs. Unlike its predecessors, this version includes AI-guided troubleshooting and a TikTok-style tutorial library. Biohackers are using it for everything, from detecting foodborne pathogens in homemade kimchi to, in one viral case, proving their roommate's hypoallergenic cat was actually part of part main coon. Critics argue it's a biosecurity nightmare. Enthusiasts counter that democratized PCR could revolutionize grassroots epidemiology. Education is getting a biohack makeover too. The Biohack Academy 2025, hosted by Amsterdam's WAG Future Lab, has become the burning man of DIY biology. For around 5,000 bucks, participants spent 10 weeks building everything from algae bioreactors to fungal leather. This year's standout project, a modular biofilter that uses genetically modified moss to absorb microplastics from shower water. It's like Brita filter, but for your existential dread, <laughs> joked its creator, a former barista turned biomaterials wizard. Then there is the implant revolution. Forget NFC chips for unlocking doors. 2025's body hackers are all about biosensing implants. Startups like BioAges now offer subdermal devices that monitor blood glucose, lactic acid, and even neurotransmitter levels. The kicker? They are powered by biofuel cells that harvest energy from your bloodstream's glucose. One early adapter live-streamed his implant data during marathon training, crowing, my body's basically a Tamagotchi now. Now freak me out and call me normie, but that's just pretty weird if you ask me. Well, <laughs> anyway, but it's not just all about humans. Environmental biohacking is booming, with amateurs tackling climate change one petri dish at a time. In Australia, a surfer scientist collective engineered a cyanobacteria strain that binds to microplastics, creating biodegradable floating reefs that marine life colonizes. In uh, California, hackers are tweaking mycelium networks to detect forest fire risks by sensing soil VOC changes. It's like giving the earth a nervous system, said one activist, whose fungal sensor recently flagged a wildfire 40 minutes before satellite detection. On the other hand, while biohackers tinker with DNA, computer scientists are obsessed with mimicking brains. Enter neuromorphic computing, chips designed to replicate the brain's architecture. Traditional CPUs process data in linear sequences, like a librarian checking out books one at a time. Neuromorphic chips, though, work in parallel, firing spikes of information like neurons. The result? 
a thousand times more energy efficiency and the ability to learn on the fly. Imagine a smartphone that doesn't drain the battery after three hours of Facebook, or AI that can recognize your face without needing a cloud server farm. Companies like Intel, with its uh, Lolly chip and IBM uh, True North, are already prototyping these systems. But here is the catch. Brains are messy. They are non-linear. They are adaptable and occasionally forget where they put the car keys. Replicating that in silicon, it's like trying to teach a toaster to write poetry. Neuromorphing computing isn't just about efficiency, it's about autonomy. These chips could enable AI that learns and evolves without human intervention. Sounds great until your Roomba starts composing weird haikus. Jokes aside, the ethical implications are staggering. If a neuromorphing AI makes a decision, who is responsible? The programmer? The chip? The ghost of the Polish guys who broke the Nazi Enigma code? And let's not forget the bias problem. Human brains are flawed, and so are the datasets we feed AI. A neuromorphic system trained on biased data could amplify prejudices faster than a Twitter algorithm. As one researcher quipped, we don't need Skynet, we need therapy for our code. Biohacking and neuromorphic computing represents two sides of the same coin. A future where technology is decentralized, accessible, and slightly unhinged. Whether it's a teenager editing genes in their garage, or a chip that dreams in binary, the line between innovator and med scientist is blurring. So what's next? Maybe bio-neuromorphic hybrids. Think CRISPR-edited neurons powering brain-inspired AI. Or maybe just a lot of DIY disasters that go viral on Twitter. Either way, the message is clear. Science isn't just for labs anymore. It's for anyone with curiosity, a credit card, and the questionable sense of risk management. As for me, I will stick to extracting strawberry DNA. At least someone invents a neuromorphic chip that can do my laundry. This was Knowing is Winning. Thank you very much for watching.